Hey there everyone. I wanted to do, I, I got a question recently that I wanted to talk about and, and I thought well maybe I'll do some, some different styles of videos. So I'm going to do some question and answer videos and talk about some things that are kind of on my mind. And this week is, is one of those. This was a question that I got and I'll paraphrase here. It's basically how, how large of an effect would a complete grid failure have on, on our society and how long would that take to rebuild? And we recently, this, this coming Thursday, our podcast is going to be out. We're talking about CMEs and a show that we saw on the, the History Channel, which is, I think it's a series and it's called The 10 Ways the World Will End or something like that. Most of the shows were a little bit ridiculous, talking about getting swallowed up by black holes and all that crap. Uh, stuff that I don't really care about. But they did have one on nuclear war and one on if a massive CME, a Carrington style event, which happened in 18... Uh, 1859 I believe uh, you know that was the last time it happened and they they estimate they should happen or could happen every hundred years or so so if you go by that math we're about 50 60 years overdue but in in that show and our podcast we went through a lot more detail in the podcast too so if you want go ahead and check that out but uh, and I'll leave a link to both of those in, below in the show notes but in the show, they talked about what effects it would have. And the main thing is, is our grid basically just being destroyed and how some of the electronics would be fried. It would cause fires. It would cause nuclear reactors to shut down, overheat, uh, spewing out radiation, all of that. The different, different situations that could happen just because of that one CME. The reason that that, that CME type event kind of concerns me is because it's, there's no control over it. You know, we, we think about all of these man-made disasters and these the infighting between countries and all that. But something like that, when the, when the sun, I said in the show, when the sun decides to puke on us, um, we're, there's nothing we can do about it. All, all it is is maybe a day or two warning, and then after that we just kind of deal with the consequences. Uh, that has the potential. Nobody really knows right now what that could do because we've never been through it. Back in 1859, we had telegraphs, and that was it. Uh, these days, everything we do revolves around electronics from, you know, just basically from our food, the way it's grown, the way it's packaged, the way it's transported, the way it's refrigerated in the stores, all depend on electricity. Our fuel depend, the refineries depend on electricity. The pumps that we get it from the ground at the gas stations, that depends on electricity. Uh, so everything we our banking systems you know our cash is is no longer the majority of our cash is no longer cash it's ones and zeros and it's all electronic so all of that stuff could has the potential to be just completely wiped out and you know how long would it be until some of that stuff became available again and i i am very unoptimistic about all this because our, our electrical grid is basically pieced together and it's it's certain it's different countries all over the, the United States that have control over these these different parts of the power grid so they're all just pieced together and there's no one cohesive unit uh, there are the electric transformers that it's estimated takes about two years to build and they're only built in I believe Germany and South Korea and for right now in the United States we I don't even think we have any backups any of these companies have any backups because they're just too expensive. So if the grid were to get damaged, uh, it would be kind of a cascading event, effect, just taking out the whole grid, and there's no way to get that back up and running uh, in a you know in a short time frame or even a long time frame. I mean, who, nobody really knows what it would look like. That would all depend on the size of the CME, the coronal mass ejection is what that is. That would all depend on the size of that too, what, what damage it did do. So this is all kind of hypothetical, but if the grid were to go completely down, I think that there would be so much complete chaos in say the first three to six months. After that, I think that the, the die off, I, it's, people say all the time that about 90% of the people will die off. Um, I could totally see that happening. In, say two months, three months maybe. Uh, maybe it might take a little bit longer for the whole complete 90%, uh, six months or so. But after that, you know, it's, it's almost a rebuilding type thing. You get past six months to a year, then you're into the rebuilding. But that first six months, there's just gonna be so much going on. It's, you, you think about how long a year is in our lives and it, it, it seems like a long time as you're going through your daily life. But when you look back, you're like, wow, that year just flew by. Uh, that six months or a year in that type of situation, probably going to feel like 10 years, 
But it is going to be gone fairly quickly, and then we've got to deal with the aftermath. But in that event, there's going to be there's going to be civil unrest. There's going to be, like I said, the die off is going to be caused by a number of different things, not just the civil unrest. It it's going to be sanitation. It's going to be uh, the sickness. It's going to be people without medications. It's going to be um, people starving, people drinking dirty water because without electricity, all of these, you know, the, the sewage, the industrial waste, the medical waste, all going to be basically backflowing into the rivers. And people that don't understand, like we understand, the, the importance of drinking clean water and how to clean water are just going to be basically filling up their container and just they're going to be dying of thirst. So they're going to be like, to heck with it. And drinking that, and that's going to cause a die out. People think they're going to go out hunting and stuff like that and live off the land. And you're going to get, you know, uh, a few hundred people in your neighborhood all with guns going out to hunt squirrels. What's that going to look like? And how dangerous is that going to be? How many bullets are going to be flying through your window? Stuff like that. That's not to mention that uh, the very beginning stages of this, I think in the first month or so, is just going to be massive civil unrest. Massive, you know, that's, that's where I'm basically hiding. Um, I don't want any part of anything with anybody because people are just going to be going after whatever they can get. And I think that's going to be the most dangerous part is is dealing with those people in a situation like that. Because regardless how extreme this sounds to a lot of people, it's not that extreme. People people will act like that in a situation like that. When they have no other choice, they're going to do what they have to do because it's either do it or die. Uh, so I think that is the, the important part. But then it comes the, you know, with all of that and, and surviving, then you've got the, you know, I hate to say it like this, but disposing of the bodies. We're going to have to deal with family members dying. We're going to have to deal with neighbors dying. We're going to have to deal with removing that so we don't have to deal with those sanitation issues. And also, you know, some of us, as much as we love to believe that we're going to make it, uh, the, the odds are that some of us aren't. We just aren't. I mean, we can do whatever we can do to get through a situation like this, but sometimes circumstances are just going to be what they are, and they're not going to be in our favor, and we're going to have to play the cards we're dealt, and we're not going to survive it. In the podcast, I mentioned that if you're in a battle and you're outgunned 20 people to one, it doesn't matter how much ammo you've stored over the last five years. Um, it's just going to be your time is up, and you're done. Uh, but that doesn't mean just give up. We're all hosed. We, we, have, to, we have to be those fighters. We, we need those survivors. And I think in the aftermath of all of this, it's going to be a lot of, I, I think anyway, it's going to be a lot of preppers. And it's going to be a lot of people that are self-reliant. Because these people that are dependent on the government, these people that don't understand all of this stuff or are too busy to even worry about this stuff, are going to be the ones that are going to die off fairly quickly. Uh, I do believe there, there are going to be some people that just kind of luck out. You know, if somebody has skills and finds the right people, you never know, and, and maybe learn on the go, those people are going to survive too. But I think at the end, it's going to be the people with that survival mindset because that's what it's going to take to get through all of this stuff. And at the end, you know, that's why, that's why learning about solar power and all of that different stuff is so important in gardening and canning and growing your own food because in the end, that's going to be... That's going to be part of that rebuilding process, and that's what it's going to take. So pretty interesting. I think if the grid were to go down for one reason or other, whether it's a CME or not, it's going to take, uh, it, it's going to be a long time, and it's going to be a rough situation. So um, in, in, a, in a smaller scale, maybe localized scale, uh, who knows what that looks like, and who knows what that cascading effect could be. Uh, as far as over, you know, getting overpowered, affecting a different one, affecting another one. Who knows what all that could look like? We really don't know. But I think on a massive scale where the whole, the whole country's grid goes down because of something like this, we could be looking at uh, back to the Stone Ages type thing. I always say that, you know, I don't see the Mad Max thing happening, but this could be something that could cause some sort of a Mad Max thing. Not the, you know, the costumes and the spikes and the people doing all that stuff, but it could be back to the Stone Ages where people become more tribal and they stick together and it's community-based until it, it grows up. The one good thing before I get out of here, the one good thing about all this is we do have all of this knowledge. That we do have this stuff ready to go uh, as far as knowing how electricity works, knowing how to create it and all that. We just have to figure out how to get that all back going again. On a large scale, I don't see that happening for a long period of time, but 
at the same time, I don't think it'll take the, you know, the 200 years it's taken us to get where we are in this country. I don't see it taking that long because we do have that knowledge to get it built back up. It's just a matter of doing it. And hopefully when we do it again, we do it the right way. Um, history has shown us that as people, we don't ever do it the right way. We just kind of go back to the way we did it before. But, you know, you never know. But that's it. If, Like I said, if you have any questions that you want me to answer, if you got anything that your topics that you, you're concerned about, let me know in the comments below. Email me at dale at survivalistprepper.net. It's what a lot of people do. Uh, I've got a few questions and a few videos that I'm going to do here in the future. Uh, but, yeah, I'd love more, more info and, and all that. So appreciate everybody, and we'll talk to you later.